Okay, so today we are starting out with the CMOS soaps, and I'm hoping to get two videos out for regular people on the YouTubes and one video out today for members only for the Sudzers. And so there's a lot going on at the moment. But, you know, considering it's already, you know, like 1030 in the morning, I don't have my watch on me, but I know that's what time it is. And it takes forever to offload these things these days because my computers are awesome. I am wondering if I'm going to be able to do that. But, you know, fingers crossed. And if that doesn't happen, you're going to get a video first thing tomorrow morning. I'll be wearing the same shirt. It's all a thing. Feel weird about it because this is the first time I would ever do that. We are doing the CMOS soaps today and starting out with a very interesting one. And I will tell you more about it in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for all things CMOS. And we talked about in the first video where I filmed my 12 months of soap video soap that had the CMOS incorporated in it, some of the benefits of CMOS, but also just kind of generally all of the problems that I ran into while I was researching CMOS. Because as I said in that video, we have only started using this CMOS, you know, thing in our cosmetics and our soaps and whatnot really, really recently. And that's not to say that it hasn't been like consumed. And I think I might have misspoke last time probably led people to believe that, you know, it's totally just a new thing just generally. It's not. I mean, I did talk about Ireland and the potato famine and stuff. So anyway, yeah, no, totally. It has been consumed and eaten, you know, for a long time. But much like so many things that we consume and put into our body, this is kind of a new one that we are deciding that we're going to put on our body. And so that was one of the reasons why I wanted to play with it, because I wasn't really familiar with CMOS until a Sudzer had brought it to my attention several months ago and really sang its praises. And so I wanted to play with it. I did so once back then, had an interesting time with it and decided, you know what? I don't know enough about this particular ingredient or this additive that we could put into our soaps. And so I like knowing all things about all things. And so I decided that I would go ahead and use the CMOS for an entire month's worth of content to really show you all the research that I end up coming up with and my overall impressions and opinions at the end of all of this. We're kind of learning together, which I think is a lot of fun. Now, generally how we've been doing this this year is I usually give you a few days of making infusions and extractions and all of the things in various forms. So we did it with coffee, we did it with rose. There's really not a reason to do that with CMOS. There's kind of only one way that it can be used because it comes in a really firm, very hard to rip. It's also interestingly hard to cut. The blender itself doesn't do a good job actually breaking everything up. It comes in a very firm form and so because it's dried sea moss. And so realistically, the process that you're going to do is you're going to hydrate it and then you're going to blend it down and create what people have called a gel. And I've yet to get a gel. Maybe throughout all of this, you will find that I did manage a gel. I'm honestly not sure. I don't think it ever happened, but I have had a lot of problems getting the chunkiness out of the sea moss so I can incorporate it into my soaps. And I think that's come with some consequences. And so I'm going to show you effectively those soaps that have like the applesauce consistency with the sea moss used in two different ways for each soap, one for each soap. And then we're also going to do some tests for the members only, for the Sudzers, and we can talk about my thoughts on why I this all happened and why it was very strange and all the problems that I experienced. So we should get to it. This particular first video is me putting the CMOS gel after I have prepared the CMOS, which I also show you, into the lye solution itself. So putting it into the lye water before actually adding the lye and then letting heat do its thing. Fast temperature rise though, which we will talk more about, if not in this video, definitely in tomorrow's, about temperature changes within CMOS because it could 
make a difference. Anyway, let's get to the video. We can talk more about all of those things, you know, where we usually do while I'm pouring some very tragic looking soap. So today we are going to go through the process of preparing the sea moss to use in soaps and cosmetics. And as it says there, dried natural sea moss. And we have all the stuff on here. It's good for stuff. It's found in Ireland and the Caribbean and all of the jazz. And then here's the instructions on it as well about how to uh, really, uh, well, prepare it to get ready to make it an actual gel. Because you see here, we've got some very strange, hard to rip. This is very difficult to rip. Fully dried sea moss hanging out here. And um, you need to essentially get it into a place that's going to work well within your soaps. And so to do that, you can follow the instructions on uh, multiple sites that sell this, really. Some sites said hot water. Some sites said cold water. So here's the overall thing, okay? I had such a time with this because there was no consistency. There was no consistency whatsoever throughout this entire uh, CMOS journey as far as whether or not it is uh, heat sensitive or whether or not you should use hot water or cold water or if you should leave it for 12 to 24. So here's basically what I have compiled. So to prepare it, you need to soak it. So you rinse it off, you soak it in cold water or hot water, either way, either way works apparently. And uh, then you're going to want to soak that for 12 to 24 to four days to help rehydrate and expand. And as you can see, mine never expanded there. It never did that. And then it uh, wants you to go ahead and blend it in this blending stage here. Once it's fully hydrated, which again, I left some of this CMOS stuff for over a week and I don't know I it still looks like applesauce to me but anyway so what you're gonna want to do is you are going to want to uh, take all of your sea moss rinse it out so rinse all the stuff that is now like been taken from the sea moss go ahead and drain that and put in some fresh water into a blender and blend until it forms a smooth gel like consistency and, you know, it says that the ratio of the sea moss to the water can vary depending on the desired thickness of the gel. And so I tried all different all different types. And this is what we're going to be working with for the rest of this week and probably most of next week as well. Just trying to figure out what consistency I liked for my sea moss. This one, I ultimately did strain all of the existing water and I put in about half the amount of the sea moss that I'd weighed out. I put in about half that amount as far as additional water into the blender. And as you can see, I don't, it, it's not very gelatinous. It's very apple saucy. And I decided for this particular soap to put it into the lye solution, to incorporate it into the lye solution. Now, the reason for that is because I did make a video on the channel several months ago when a sudzer head requested that I, you know, try out the sea moss or recommended it rather. And I did it and I didn't have the greatest time. I still had this consistency with this is very much a, a an applesauce type thing. And I'd put it directly into the soaping oils and I didn't super love it. And so I thought for this test, I'll go ahead and try it into the lye solution first and see if we have any difference with all of this because I found little clumps of things existing within it and I didn't like that and my soap was just kind of wonky and so I decided to do it this way. So what I have done with all of this is I've measured out three ounces of sea moss, that, the sea moss gel that I have now put into my water for my lye solution and I'm now going to incorporate my lye into this solution and I'm thinking maybe the heat will help soften up any of these sort of chunky bits a little bit more so there's not a, a very strange texture in the end result of my soap and that's not to say that I'm afraid of texture I love texture in soap I love glycerin rivers I love different exfoliants I I enjoy an interesting texture within soap it's not that it's just I have been told that this is a process where you can get a completely smooth beautiful bar of soap with no little pockets of hey this is sea moss gel you know and so I'm trying it to see if it's going to maybe get smaller and not have any of those clumpy bits via the use of the exothermic reaction between the lye and the water 
And so that's what we'll be working with today. Uh, spoiler alert, everything gets really weird. And so that's why we're having so many videos and a members only because none of this really went as planned, but you know, we're testing. We're just doing that. We're doing the test. So let's let this cool down and we can incorporate it into our water or our soap oils rather and get to soaping. So let's soap this up. Now for all of the recipes that I'm going to use, I'm going to keep the recipe consistent with all of the fatty acids. So all of the oils in my recipe. So we'll be using my uh, basic three. So it's going to be equal parts essentially of coconut, olive, and palm, and a 5% super fat for all of this. And my water is going to be the exact same that it always has been. So I soap it 2.4 times water to lye. And we have an, an addition with this, with the three ounces of the sea moss that has been put into. Never did get looking gelatinous within the lye solution either. It's still got some chunky bits. And also uh, copious amounts of kaolin clay, which is one of the reasons why I use so much water within my batches. But here's the thing. Because I always use quite a bit of water, you would think that also maybe some of this water would be helping soften up this. I, look at that. It's just so crazy. And I did also notice that it was very, very slow to trace. And I have a lot of theories as to why everything ended up being the way that it, well, well, the way that you're going to see today and later today and tomorrow. And so I'm going to talk about that in the members only. We're going to do some tests on it while I, you know, give my theories. And so definitely Sudzers, look out for that one. But this time that it took to trace was actually crazy. And this is a little bit painful because I left all of this in. This pour in and of itself, not a very long pour, but I left all of this part that I usually either speed up, usually I just speed it up in for all of this to show you just how long it is taking. Look how thin that batter is. It's actually really surprising. And I have some ideas as to why that is. And I think it has a lot to do with the minerals that are found within the sea moss. But again, we're gonna talk more about that throughout today, tomorrow, and the members only. So yes, we're going to be doing that. Now, as we said in the first video on the sea moss, we were talking about the fatty acids, right? And the sea moss does contain a bunch of fatty acids, which is specifically omega-3 and omega-6. And these are gonna be really good for maintaining healthy skin and omega-3s and 6s are really known for their moisturizing and their nourishing properties which will definitely benefit the skin, whether you're putting it on it or whether you're consuming your omegas and threes and sixes. But additionally, in addition to the fatty acids, CMOS also contains lots of other stuff. So we have lots of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. And so that's going to help promote a healthier skin, improve hydration, overall skin health, because it's very, very nutrient rich. And I was talking about that in regards to the amount of minerals that exist within CMOS, and I believe that might have something to do with why this batter stayed so thin for so long, took forever to get to trace. And again, this is a, this is a recipe that I've worked with a million times, you know? So it's not like I'm testing out something different in all of this because I, you know, I'm not, I'm not changing anything else up. So normally this type of you know, oil blend with this exact same water amount, kaolin clay, all the jazz will take me maybe a minute to hit a trace. And several minutes went by with all of that. And so I do, I mean, obviously the thing that you're going to go to is, yeah, it's something about the sea moss. That, that's why it's taking so long to trace. Is that because the sea moss is eating some of the lye and there's no longer enough lye in the solution to actually saponify everything fully? Well, because uh, we do have experiences with that when you put certain additives into your soaps, that is the case. But the end results of this were not really uh, showing that. And so, uh, we, you know, we're going we're gonna to go with that. Now, also, with all of the soaps that we are making for these tests, we will be doing a lather test on all of them. But also, we're doing a specific, um, well, design for all of them. And so it's just going to be a two color split and I'll be alternating the tops and the bottoms. And I'm also putting poppy seeds in it 
because I thought it would look pretty that way. And also, hey, exfoliant bar. Cool. I am also using a bunch of scents from Sierra Candles that I have never used. And so I'm testing some cool blends in all of this. I think the one that I just showed on camera for this soap is the Palo Santo white grapefruit. I have used that before. I freaking love it. It is absolutely delightful. That really beautiful, crisp note of your, the grapefruit combined with kind of the woodsy and like sensual tones of the Palo Santo. Mm, so good. So good. Highly recommend. But this particular soap, I didn't take a long time to pour. It was maybe nine minutes in total to get everything. And that was including the amount of time it took to trace. And as you can see, very, very thin soap batter. I had to let it sit for uh, around 10, 15 minutes before it got to this stage so I could kind of sculpt the top. And as you can see, it's really, really schloopy. And I don't like it. This was the first batch of soap that I made for this whole test because the one that I showed you before for the 12 months of soap, I actually made that last in this whole process. And so that's why it ended up smooth. But anyway, let's check out this cut. Yeah, but this one was for sure the first, and I say that to just give you an idea of how not fun I thought this entire process was going to be, because look at this. It's just, it looks odd, and there's definitely seepage going on, and that is not going to be seepage from the fragrance oil, because I've used the fragrance oil before, and so I didn't have any issues with that. I've used that fragrance oil within this same blend, and so really what the seepage were we're getting from all of this is going to be something to do with the sea moss and I'm wondering is it being water doesn't super make sense but it could be that there was I mean obviously the sea moss contained water in addition to the the water that was put into the lye solution for the lye solution and I did not discount my water for that but we're not talking about enough water to matter to actually caused this sort of like the whole bar was just wet when I unmolded it and if you can see in these cuts so far every single soap has a very odd texture with all these little clumps of sea moss and stuff hanging out but also some of it kind of looks like oh are these residual lye pockets is that what that looks like and of course that's not what that looks like we've talked about that before what the lye um, actually does. And so you're, you're never going to get like a, an undissolved lye pocket in soap. Like you had to have messed up that batch so incredibly in order for that to be a thing. And so, no, I don't think that that's at all what we're working with, but I do think that did actually make me wonder, well, what is lye going to react to within this solution? We know that there's fatty acids within the sea moss. Is it going to react putting it into the lye solution enough that we're going to have a film of oil on top of the lye solution. As you can see, that was not the case. So no, are we going to end up with any of the lye attaching to the sea moss instead of doing its thing with the fatty acids? That doesn't make sense either because it's not, uh, well, that's not how lye works. That's not how saponification works. And so there'd be no reason to do that. I mean, the least path of resistance would be what the lie is always going to want to do. And so, no, I don't think that that's the case either. However, it did look so kind of unhealthy that I did want to make sure that we did lie tests or pH tests. So we will be doing that again in the members only live, but there is the first one for now. Yeah. So there's not a lot that I actually like about that soap. Not not really. I mean, I was going for, first and foremost, a very beautiful, smooth bar of soap in my mind because I have been told that that is possible within CMOS. Uh, so it was already not hitting my expectations. But number two, just parts of it kind of looked unhealthy. It really does remind me of a lot of pictures that I've seen on different soap making forums over the years where people are asking, is this a lie pocket? It's probably not. It's very hard to actually do that. As I said, if you're interested in more information about that, we have done videos on lye and really trying to push it to failure to show you what lye heavy soap looks like, to show you what happens when you do double the amount of lye and half the water, et cetera, and so forth, and how that impacts your soaping. And so unless you've really messed up a recipe, you're not gonna get it. So that is not what that was in my soap, but it did make me wonder about some of the other pieces within 
what sea moss is comprised of. And so remember we talked about minerals. I am down a mineral path right now. And so we're going to go further into the minerals that exist within sea moss. And we're going to talk more about the temperature spikes and how that can impact sea moss from what I found with my research and all of the things. And we're going to incorporate it in a different way while keeping the water level basically the same. We are gonna play with it a little bit for the next soap, but really the thing that I wanna test is the difference from putting it in the lye solution to putting it into the actual soaping oils. So that's what we'll be working on for the next video. I said tomorrow, I'm hoping it's today. I wanna to get these two videos out today. And then again, the uh, pH test and the other tests for the members only. So we can really talk about my opinions on all of that. So I'm hoping that that works out. Sudzers, thank you for being here. What is your experience with CMOS, Ben? I know that a lot of you have commented on the first video as well as in the Discord and you guys all like it. You've, you've had none problems with it. And so that's interesting to me because I've had problems. And so we're going to we're going to continue exploring all of this and hopefully I get this whole consistency right before it's time to put into cosmetics because there's no real room for a little rogue bit of, you know, applesauce in a lotion. You know, it won't go through the squeeze. So that's what we'll be doing for the rest of the week. Sudzers, tell me your opinions on everything below. All of the jazz. I love you. I mean it. I hope everybody's doing well today. I got a Zoom Zoom. Uh, got lots to do. I've already said all of that. But I will see you guys all again soon. Tomorrow, today, I don't know, for another round of CMOS Soapy Fun. Bye.